uh, as in workforce, labor demand and supply, the talent pools of ASEAN professionals, uh, resource exploitation of ASEAN countries. So ASEAN need to plan ahead. ASEAN need to uh, have with good strategies to cope with this kind of uh, huge flows of capital into the region. Also has to produce people to accommodate the growing demand of labor. Secondly, for the urbanization and migration of ASEAN, uh, with a lot of changes in ASEAN in the future, we're going to have a lot of movement towards the city, urban movement, urban migration. ASEAN cities will become uh, bigger and bigger, and we're going to need good infrastructure development of ASEAN cities. Uh, also, the bigger size of the city will create more middle classes and it may cause uh, environmental problems, garbage waste and other things. The rise of middle class and new riches, uh, we have a booming consumer products and markets and services like technology products. ASEAN now has very high mobile phone subscri subscription already. The smartphones will change the behavior of the ASEAN economy, ASEAN consumers in the future. Uh, we need to have a driver of entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, but as people have easy access to the capital markets, as people can use a lot of financial transactions uh, on smartphones, then they may spend more money. So people can may spend more than they earn. So the um, debt, you know, high debt uh, of us in family, household, household debts may increase. In Thailand right now, you can, know, you can realize that the household debt is very high, more than 80% of Thai GDP. And most families in Thailand, now they have debt a lot of debt. Expansion of IT and social media. Uh, we have a lot of internet users. Uh, we have bodily source of knowledge. Uh, digital media and consumers and entrepreneurs. So people will have more participation, more social exchanges. But if you have authoritarian controls, it would be not really effective in controlling your population. People will, you know, manage to spread rumors, can uh, uh, organize a protest much easier. Also, at the same time, you have a lot of laws that you have to amend, like privacy invasion and other things. Aging population. ASEAN countries are aging like Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam aging quickly. So you have a lot of questions like health care, uh, treatments, uh, health care costs. Uh, you have to find people to work. Uh, working population will be decreasing. What going to do with the retirees? Women roles in society. Uh, this is the female participation rates in the labor force. Cambodia is highest, Malaysia is the lowest. So people need to balance between the work and the life, the family. Uh, if you increase the penetration rates of female participation in some society, then the productivity may increase. So you need to find a new work model. For the culture, as in culture, uh, as we have more uh, migrants, as we have more exchanges, more integration, we need to find a multicultural policy. Your office may have a lot of people from across the region. You need to have diverse workforce. And also, people need to adapt to different cultures at the same time. So ASEAN has many challenges in the, in the years ahead because of these new trends. 
the aging population has implications on labor and capital, climate changes have big implications on food security, uh, price, you know, inclusive growth. So we need to find a new growth model to be an inclusive society, uh, to help the disadvantaged people or smaller economy, smaller sectors, SME people. How could they survive uh, in this capital world, capitalistic world? Because the big companies, they trying to merge and acquire smaller companies. Energy productivity, uh, climate change, we have the Paris Agreement to reduce gas emissions, so we need to uh, produce less uh, carbon emission. We need alternative energy, we need new technology, also better logistic systems. For disparities between um, different groups in society and between different countries, we need to promote equity and efficiency. We need new policies to reduce the development gap. We need also changing rules and regulations to promote effective actions in services um, and to promote trade facilitations uh, because in some sectors the governments are still very protective. Uh, in some society, then they still protect state enterprises. We still have state monopoly in many industries. In Thailand, for example, uh, the state maintains monopoly in electricity production and the transmission line. Uh, in in Asia also, government maintains monopoly in some sectors, in Vietnam as well. We need to connect with ASEAN and beyond. We need transport corridor, or we need trade and transport facilitation corridor, we need good logistic corridor, uh, urbanization, de urbanization development corridor to connect between different cities. That's why we have uh, high-speed train development from Jakarta to Bandung, uh, from Thailand to, I don't know, to the north or the northeast. We also have to promote financial integration uh, in order to promote the sector, reduce the transaction cost, financial cost of development. I think I should Stop it right here. Green chai. Green chai. Okay, maybe just one or two more slides. We need to have an architecture for future cooperation. Uh, I need, uh, need to maintain a multi track, multi speed architecture. Uh, <clears throat> to, because we have many initiatives, we have to pursue all these initiatives together. We need to strengthen institutional support uh, of ASEAN Secretariat, make it has more teeth, more power. We need to sharpen the focus and coherence of regional and global forums. ASEAN needs to have a higher role in the global uh, politics. ASEAN needs to deepen its cooperation and need to stand up together and to you know, as ASEAN has the, is the third largest population in the world, it should perform its function as a, as a global power as well. It should not be treated like, um, uh, how you call, secondary to, to other powers. It should not be treated by America as a developing, small developing country. As in together is quite strong, quite big, and we should be able to back in with the global powers. <clears throat> we need stronger Indonesia <laughs> to, to, you know, to perform its role as an ASEAN leader. Also, political leaders are at the center of regional cooperation. They introduce its goals and implement its decisions. So, 
we need good leadership in ASEAN countries. We need good governance. If we don't have good governance inside our country, we cannot have good ASEAN leaders. Uh, institutions of regional cooperation are uh, second vital source of the ideas and energy. So uh, <clears throat> we need to strengthen the capacity of ASEAN Secretariat to have the best people to work there. Knowledge generating institutions outside the official sphere can play an uh, active role. So we need good ASEAN think tanks as in universities uh, should perform its role, civil society needs to participate in and champion regional integration, including business people, professionals, uh, leaders of non-governmental organizations, expert in universities, laboratories, and research institutes of ASEAN, and also analysts in the media. Basically, all these professionals need to work for ASEAN. They need to try to influence ASEAN decision making, and ASEAN need to incorporate these civic, these civil society groups into the ASEAN realm. So. Next week, I will uh, cover the issues of the development, the development series. I should have done that last week, but not enough time. Next week, I will cover more on the series. OK, thank you. I don't know what is this. Cannot close it. Okay. When is the next lecture?